Horatius at the Bridge, Part 2, by Thomas Babington Macaulay. The not spake spurious Lartius, and Ramnian proud was he, though I will stand at thy right hand and keep the bridge with thee. And now spake strong Herminius, of Titian blood was he, I will abide on thy left side and keep the bridge with thee. Horatius, quoth the consul, as thou sayest, so let it be. And straight against that great array forth went the dauntless three, for Romans in Rome's quarrel, spied neither land nor gold, nor son, nor wife, nor limb, nor life in the brave days of old. Then none were for a party, then all were for the state, and the great man helped the poor. The poor man loved the great, and the oils were early portioned and spoils were sparely sold the romans were like brothers in the brave days of old now roman is to roman more hateful than the foe and the tribunes beard the high and the fathers grind the low as we wax hot in faction until we wax cold Wherefore men fight not as they fought in the brave days of old. Now while the three were tightening their harness on their backs, the consul was the foremost man to take in hand an axe. And fathers mixed with commons, each hatchet, bar, and crow, and smot upon the planks above and loose the props below. Meanwhile the Tuscan army, right glorious to behold, came flashing back the noonday light, ranked beyond rank like surges bright of a broad sea of gold. Or hundred trumpets sounded a peal of lore like green, as that great host with measured tread and spirits advanced and dance and spread all slowly towards the bridge's head where stood the dauntless three the three stood calm and silent and looked upon the foes and a great shout of laughter from all the vanguard rose and forth three chiefs came spurring before the mighty mighty mass to earth they sprang their swords they drew and lifted high their shields and flew to win the narrow pass Honest from green to Fenum, lord of the hill of the lines, and Seus, who staked hundred slaves, sicken in Ilva's mines, and Picus long in Clustium, vassal in peace and war, who led to fight his Umbrian powers, from that grey crag, where girt with towers, the Drisna Mequinum towers, over the pale waves of Nar. Stort Lartius hurled down Honest into the stream beneath, Herminus stuck at Sanus, and clove him in the teeth, as Picus brave Horatius darted one briery thrust, and the proud Umbrian's gilded arms clashed in the bloody dust. Then Ochnus of Falari rushed at the Roman three, and Lossalus of Urgo, the rover of the sea, and Arons of Volsinium, who slew the great wild boar, the great wild boar that had its den amidst the reeds of Cosa's fen, and wasted fields and slaughtered men, all along Albania's shore. Herminius slurred down the Arons, Lartius swore Osnus low, right to the heart of Lausulus. Aurigius sent a blow. Lie there, he cried, fell pirate, no more aghast and pale. From Ostia's wall the crowd shall mark, mark the track of thy destroying bark. No man or Campania's hind shall fly to woods and caverns when they spy thy Christ's accursed sail. But now no shout of laughter was heard amid the foes, a wild and wrathful clamor. From all the vanguard rose, six spears length from the entrance halted that mighty mass, deep array and forest space no man came forth to win the narrow pass. But hark the cry is Astor and lo the ranks the divide, and the great lord of Luna comes with his stately stride. Upon his ample shoulders clanks forth the fourfold shield, and in his hand he shakes the brand which none but he can wield. He smiled on those bold Romans, a smile serene and high. He eyed the flinching Tuscans, and scorn was he in his eye. Good he, the she-wolf litter, stand savagely at bay. But will ye dare to follow? If Astor clears the way, then whirling up his broadsword with both hands to the height, he rushed against Horatius and smote with all his might. With shield and blade, Horatius right deftly turned the blow. The blow, though turned, came yet too nigh. It missed his helm, but gashed his thigh. The Tuscans raised a joyful cry to see the red blood blow flow. He reeled in on Herminius, he leaned one breathing space, then like a wild cat mad with wounds sprang right at Astra's face, through teeth and skull and helmet, so fierce the thrust he sped, the good sword stood a hand breast out beneath the Tuscan's head. And the great lord of Ruma fell at that deadly stroke, as falled on Mount Alvernus, a thunder smitten oak. Far over the crashing forest, the gray arms they spread, the pale loggers muttering low, gaze on the blasted head. 
And now it's throat, Horatius, right, flatlessly pressed his heel, and thrice and four months uh, tugged amain, ere he wrenched out the steel. And see, he cried, the welcome, fair guests that wait you here, what Lord Balucomo comes yet to taste our Roman cheer. But at this his haughty challenge, a sullen murmur ran, mingled of wrath and shame and dread along that glittering fan. They lack not men of prowess, nor men of lordly race. For all Etruria's noblest were round the fatal place, but all Etruria's noblest felt the heart sing to see, on the earth the bloody corpses in the path, the dauntless three, and from the ghastly entrance where the bold Romans stood, all shrank like boys who, unaware, ranging the woods to start a hare, come into the mouth of the dark lair, where, rowling low, a fierce old bear lies in its bones and blood." was none would be foremost to lead such dire attack. But those behind cried, FORWARD! And then those behind cried, BACK! And backward now and forward wavers the great array, and on the tossing sea of st uh, steel, to and fro the thunders reel, and the victorious trumpet peal dies fitfully away. It one man for one moment strode out before the crowd, while well, no was he to all the three, and they gave him greeting loud. No welcome, welcome, Sextus, no welcome to thy home. Why dost thou stay and turn away? Here lies the road to Rome. Thrice looked he at the city, thrice looked he at the dead, and thrice came on in fury, and thrice turned back in dread, and white with fear and hatred, scowling at the narrow way, where, rowling in a pool of blood, the bravest Tuscans lay. But meanwhile, axe and lever have manfully been plied, and now the bring's hands tottering above the boiling tide. Come back, come back, Horatius, loud cried the fathers all. Back, Lartius, Herminius, ech, ere the ruin fall. Back darted Spurius Lartius, Herminius darted back. And as they paused uh, beneath their feet, they hurled the timbers crack. But when they turned their faces and on the farther shore, so brave or I just stand alone, they would have crossed once more. But with a crash like thunder, fell every loosened beam, and like a dam, the mighty wreck lay right athwart the stream, and a long shout of triumph rose from the walls of Rome, as to the highest turret tops were splashed the yellow foam. And like a horse unbroken, when first he feels the rain, the furious river struggled hard and tossed its to his tawny mane, and burst the curb and bounded, rejoicing to be free, and whirling down in first curious career, battling and playing, and can peer, rushed headlong to the sea. Alone stood brave Horatius, but constant still in mind, thrice thirty thousand was before, and the blood flood behind. Down with him! cried false Texas with a smile on his pair of lace. Now yield thee, cried Arspicenna, you yield thee to our grace! Round turned he, as not deigning those craven ranks to see. Not spoke he to Lars Porcina, to Sexus not spake he. But he saw in Palatinus the white porch of his home, and he spake to the Romo River that rolls by the towers of Rome. O Tiber, Father Tiber, to whom the Romans pray, a Roman's life, a Roman's arm, take thou in charge this day. So he spake, and speaking sheathed the good sword by his side, and with his harness on his back, plunged headlong in the tide. Horatius at the Bridge, Part 2, by Thomas Babington Macaulay, and...